and the teacher said, I, I can't remember this girl's name, we'll call her Sophie. Sophie, can you tell us where middle C is? And she just came over and played it. And the teacher just looked at me with this kind of judgmental expression on her face. And I said, I'm never going back. <laughs> and Bring me the best word. this podcast is about you and your music journey. And we'll talk about your new record. Sounds, sounds great. Awesome, Listen to awesome. your lovely, deep, mellifluous voice. I'm going to have to put on, I'm going to have to put on one of my, one of my character voices to, uh, <laughs> do it, do it. Uh, it's, it's a life of radio that I've been in for a very long time. <laughs> well, it's, I, I, I don't like not having the most majestic sounding voice in the room. So this is very, 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 very infuriating for me. <laughs> Well, I'm sorry about that. I appreciate you being here. No, though. you aren't. No, you aren't. You're <laughs> gleefully bathing in it. <laughs> well, talk to me about where were you born and raised? So I was born um, in Cambridge in England um, and grew up in, in South London. Okay. Um, and uh, was sort of quite heavily involved in music stuff from probably about age 10 to singing singing in choirs and um i started taking drum kit lessons uh around the same age as well and i had some some really influential music teachers who were very positive and enthusiastic and and keen to share with you stuff that they loved if they felt that it was your jam mm -hmm. so my drum teacher would you know even in my drum lessons we would just play along to the Doobie Brothers and Chaka Khan and all that stuff, even though I was 11, you know, but he, cause <laughs> sure. he could tell that that was the stuff I was grooving to and enjoying. Uh -huh. um, and then, you know, even singing in the sort of like slightly more uh, stuffy kind of um, even song, choir, cho sort of choral music. They could tell that I loved the kind of, um, the you know the rap pack stuff and all, all of that so eventually they let me do like a sinatra tribute concert when i was about 15 or 16 and oh, then cool. we transitioned into stevie wonder soul nights and i would play the drums in the in the jazz orchestra and i played drums my first ever paid job was playing the drums in a west end production of bugsy malone uh really yeah that was my first ever job i ever earned any money for and uh honestly to this day i don't have very many happier memories than that because i I got to sort of stand up. I didn't enjoy school very much. I got to stand up, you know, halfway through class on a on a Wednesday if we had matinees and and get and and pick up my drumsticks in the middle of class and be like, peace out. I'm 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 getting the train up to London to be a jazz drummer where I moonlight as a jazz drummer, you know. And it was just like, yeah, obviously I didn't say any of that. Or maybe I did say it, and that's why I didn't have any friends. But anyway, uh that I still am struggling to remember happier, a happier time than that. That is amazing. Prior to the drums, did you, were you in piano lessons or anything like that growing up? So I had one piano lesson when I was oh. about six. Okay. This horrible woman taught me this lesson. And at the end of the lesson, she said, can you show me where middle C was? And I was looking down at all these keys swimming at me thinking they all look the same to me. Right. Um, and then this little four-year-old girl came in and the teacher said, I can't remember this girl's name, we'll call her Sophie. Sophie, can you tell us where middle C is? And she just came over and played it. And the teacher just looked at me with this kind of judgmental expression on her face. And I said, I'm never going back. <laughs> and I, 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 you know, I regret that she shamed me so hard because I, I didn't really pick it up again until I was about 36. And really? And I w always wanted to, because I always wanted to be Nat King Cole and Stevie Wonder and Johnny Hathaway and and Elton John and and Freddie Mercury and all these brilliant sort of p singer vo sort of vocalist piano players mm -hmm. uh, were the were the people that I really really admired. I just loved the sound of it. And even when I was very young, I had this future nostalgic feeling of being able to just sort of sit at my piano. It, you know sit at a baby grand at any you know of an evening and and sort of play and sing and just enjoy that and mm. in my mid to late 30s I was like I need to prioritize that if I want that to be my life mm -hmm. or not my life but if I want it to be something you know if I really want this and and I realized I did really want it so 
there she is and uh Amazing. Is that I'm pointing to the, uh, to the I see, I see it in the background I there. <laughs> yeah, I got, I, I, I managed to actually buy this, um, from a recording studio that was closing down. It's a 1970s old Yamaha baby grand, which I wow. was going to buy for my 40th birthday. And then, um, uh, with the, with the sort of lockdown and everything, we got it. I got it a year early. Uh, and then you, you, for your 40th birthday. Now you put it, you put a record out. Well, exactly. And most of the songs, was, uh, you know, fi- at least finished on that on that piano, which is which is pretty cool. That is amazing. Were you writing songs prior to that or is, it, or is this something fairly new for you? I was sort of writing bits of songs is the truth. Okay. of it. I, I, I when I was 19, I signed to Simon Fuller and I and I was working with some different producers and I was writing some songs and I have recordings of some of them mm-hmm. um, and they're not very good. Uh, but that was, uh, you know that was the year 2000 for you um <laughs> uh, people are going to tweet me now brilliant songs that came out in 2000 aren't they yeah um <laughs> probably it, it just wasn't really uh you know the the what was capturing the the sort of zeitgeist was not the kind of music that i was really enjoying and i think you got you get lured into pop bands and you get lured into doing music that you don't truly believe in and i think that's that just don't never it never has any staying power to it if you don't mm-hmm. love it sure it's not everyone you know that there's so many different genres of music because different people love different things and mm-hmm. and i think honestly just like i said even when i was a teenager i was doing sonata tribute concerts and stevie wonder nights and all of this and then during the course of my acting career three or four different movies that I've played musicians and singers, but it's always mm-hmm. someone else's voice and it's always someone else's songs and it's always someone else's, um, you know, it's al- almost, an, you know, it was an impression. And, mm-hmm. uh, and it was just, it just became very clear to me that it was time to not do an impression and to finish all these lyrics that were sitting in these notebooks and to really like piece something together that was from me and mm-hmm. of me. And, uh, and kind of honest and uh and that's so that's what i spent the pandemic doing <laughs> amazing well did you you play drums in the you said you played drums for a musical correct i did and then did you end up acting in the same musical later or were you you no, were no, in I musical theater right but yeah so i was like, i was 15 but i would no, in that one i just i just played the drums in that one but drums. i had some okay. various musicals over the years oh, not, okay. not very many but one or two Okay. So you started off on the drums and then did you, when did your acting career kind of take over the music? I would say, uh, well, I, when I was a, between about 16 and 20, I was involved mm-hmm. with a company called the National Youth Music Theatre, which was like a company that wrote and performed m- musicals a- around the UK. Um, on a sort of professional level, but everyone in them was between 11 and nine, 19 oh, okay. um, or 11 and 20. And, and so it was like a brilliant training ground for sort of learning professionalism and being around, you know, they auditioned all over the country. So it was like, I was around these astonishingly talented kids. Mm-hmm. Um, and I felt complete, I had complete imposter syndrome, but uh, even then, um, but, but, um, uh, it was a really good kind of grounding kind of thing for me that made me know I had to sort of do this for for a living if there's any way that I could. And so I thought I would just sort of be in musicals because I thought, well, a bit of singing and a bit of acting and that'll that'll sort of be just about enough to stand at the back and hold a spear and sing in the <laughs> chorus or something. I don't know. And uh, uh, but then I think the the music part of it, you know, when I was 19, that, that dream sort of felt like it was slipped through my fingers a little bit. So I think the kind of acting part of it just kind of took over. And, and, and then I started doing more theater in London and, and then, you know, various smaller films and then smaller parts in bigger films. And then eventually, you know, you sort of land a bigger, a bigger acting role. And it's, and it's, you know, I think it's all the same to me though. It's all storytelling. Yeah, and, performance. you know, every film has music in it. Every film has songs in it. You mm-hmm. know, it, it's to me, they're not, I don't particularly see this as, oh, now, 
now he, he was an actor and now he's a musician it's to me i've done lots of singing and and playing of instruments in the context of my acting career it's all right it's all storytelling you know i was gonna say because i mean even making it into the national youth musical theater like that's you're acting but you're also singing and it sounds like you really started with with music I, I did, I did, but even some of the films that I'm the proudest of, I would say Killing Bono and Jackie and Ryan, um, Easy Virtue, the films that I'm proudest of that I've been involved with are films that I, uh, you know, that I sing in. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. And with, uh, you, weren't you also in like a pop band for a little bit, like a Eurovision? I was for about two, for about, yes, for about two weeks when I was, uh, <laughs> okay. I think it was about 19. Um, what was that like? And, um, Again, I was sort of signed to do this to to record sort of more more big band jazz stuff and 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 host a TV show, and then they asked me to be to sort of replace someone in this pop band, and I I wasn't sure, but I sort of did it because I just was so desperate to be involved in anything that was to do with music, um, mm -hmm. and I thought it would be sort of a quite a low key thing, and then of course we we only had one song and we performed it, or maybe we had two, but I think. Uh, I we 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 performed one song once on the on on the TV and and that was and that was that was the real nail in the coffin for me. I rang up the next morning having watched it back and gone, "Oof, this is not something I love." <laughs> um, and and uh, I can't I can't do I can't do this anymore. Um, so that that ended that your stint in the boy yeah, in the, I, I in the pop band. I just wasn't very good at it. I, I I'm not an, a a natural. Uh, I'm not. My body does not naturally move like Justin Timberlake's. I I, I I'm not a sort of natural like performer for the sake of it in that way. Like I, if I'm going to perform, I have to like. It's because I'm like with the acting. Like I'm trying to find the truth in something. I'm trying to find something honest. And I felt like that was about as far from me being honest as. As, as anything I've ever done, you know. That's interesting. <laughs> um, so talk to me about, you said the this pandemic was kind of what pushed this this record? Well, I think it was just about the reordering of priorities. I think, okay. you know, for a lot of us during that time, if you take away the structure of what we do on day to day and the people that we interact with and the things we have to look forward to, what, what are you sort of left with? And, it, uh, and I think, for a lot of people that was time to think about their place in the world and what they would like to do with that that freedom and time when they get it back hopefully mm -hmm. um and um i know i know a lot of people channeled that into extremely important causes and extremely important um movements and and uh you know i sort of um was uh, you know to the best of my power, uh, applauding and supporting a lot of that stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think, for, for, uh, you know, we all had our personal things as well. And, and, and on a personal level, it was it was reordering my priorities to so that I wouldn't end up this 80 year old man who'd never done, who'd never put out his songs and never shared music with the world. You know, it's not going to be for everyone, but nor is any music. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it had built, you know, I, I, I'd had this litmus test posting covers on Instagram for the last four or five years. I would post a song at Christmas and I thought, well, that doesn't count because it's just a Christmas song at Christmas. And then mm -hmm. I would post something to do with some work I was doing. Well, that doesn't count. And then, and then I found myself just being like, I'm covering Bowie because I love it. Or I'm covering okay. you know, Queen because I love it. Or, you know, have this little snippet of a Daniel Caesar song. And because the reactions were, oh, this sounds great. Or could you cover this song? Or it was very supportive, you know, and then it, it sort of led all the way through to people on Twitter being like, when are we going to get your album? When are we going to get your stuff? And, and at, at that point, it made me question, yeah, what, when are they going to get mm -hmm. that? You know, <laughs> um, it's, it's, and it was just important for me, I think after 20 years of being directed and edited and written for that I did something completely from me that, that and, it, and, it's, and, it, and I found it very freeing, in, uh, honestly, even just in the context of, of talking to someone like yourself. Um, I feel like having gone from someone who was a bit cautious when people were asking questions because I felt like it was prying and now it's like I'm just chatting and we're sharing and that's what we're supposed to do as human beings is communicate like that and so, yeah, I feel a bit unburdened by doing it, I think. 
That's amazing. So you had these songs started already? Is that what you said? Like these are just uh, bits and pieces of songs that you've been working on over the course of the past, you know, number of years? Or yeah, did I think, you start I think there fresh? Were part, there were parts of the songs that were just in notebooks and, um, you know, I, I, I write down a lot of phrases. Amazingly, even in the course of just talking about this record, I've written down one or two phrases, even that various journalists have asked a question in a certain way it made me think of something or I'll be reading something and I'll write down a sentence from something I've been reading because I like the way it's crafted mm -hmm. um and I think often those things I find very inspiring so um you know and actually even for I think one of the songs on the EP I went back and listened to one of my songs from when I was 19 and took two lines from it because it just oh really yeah and it just felt it but 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 they were all finished within the the sort of very early pandemic they were all they were all none of them felt complete um because they didn't have the context of of you know sort of where i was in my life and and who i was as a man you know they didn't and i think now they all have this sort of um thematic connection of of hopefulness in the face of confusion mm -hmm. um all the songs have that to them uh hopefulness in the face of uncertainty and i think that that was what the pandemic was about it's what a lot of our lives are about it's what a lot most of our days are about mm -hmm. just sort of forging ahead even though things aren't completely clear was there a point like when you were writing this or like when did you when did it click that you're like this is i'm gonna you know, make sure I'm going to put out a piece of work here. Like you, so you I was, talked about like the 40th birthday thing. Like I'm going to put it out of the record. Of my 40th. Yeah. Birthday. I didn't know that yet. I, what I, I was actually doing reshoots for um, a show I do on Netflix called shadow and bone. And mm -hmm. uh, I had to go up to Canada to, to shoot for two days. And, but in order to do that, I had to quarantine for 15 days in a, in a hotel room. Oh, right. Canada was and very strict. The I don't, they I don't the, even yeah, know. Yeah. They took the key. <laughs> when, when you went in it was very serious it was huge fines and th threats of prison sentences and, and all sorts and it, obviously it was at the time you know everyone was running very scared and and so that you know in Canada's rates were low and so they were obviously being very strict which was which was very, which was great because it felt mm -hmm. very safe when you got out there but um this 15 days was very long oh my gosh um, I can't even imagine it they just lock long. the door and that's it. Like we'll come get you in 15 days. Pretty much, honestly. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, pretty much. And um, and I had this little keyboard that that someone helped me get from Facebook. I think <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how it worked, but somebody helped me get it from Facebook. I had this little keyboard in the room, and. I managed to finish the song Rise Up, which, which uh, at, during that time. Okay. And it felt like this little sort of sacred little hymn that I was using to comfort myself, but it, it sort of started life as this little poem that I wrote for someone else that was supposed to support the boy them, because I think everyone that I knew around that time was struggling with life. Mm -hmm. um, and and when I finished that song, I was like, I, I, I'm going to share this song somehow. I don't know how, but it might just be on Instagram, but I'd never posted a you know, song of my own. I, was, I wasn't sure what I was going to do. And then I thought, no, I want to do it on a bigger scale than that. I don't need to be Adele, but I do need, I do need this to be more than just an Instagram story. Um, so I was proud of it, and mm -hmm. and then I and then I thought, well, actually, I have quite a few a few songs that are. If I was just to really knuckle down and do this, then I could really do it. And I finished another song while I was doing those fifteen days as well. And then and then so then when I got home, I was like, right, this is my job now. I I I'm doing this. I'm going to find producers to help me. I'm gonna, you know channel my focus and energy into doing this and making something really real. Mm -hmm. And did you take those songs once you, you know, 
get the producers and everyone intact do you take it to um, i would imagine you take it to a proper studio record in like a big studio setting um no really because, because of the pandemic i would have okay but because of the pandemic we had to do each piece remotely so the drums and bass were recorded in northern ireland by a friend of mine who worked on the killing bono film a uh, mm -hmm. brilliant drummer and um okay uh, that was my next question i was gonna ask you if you played drums on the project too because you're i didn't about, okay. i didn't i didn't and i didn't even i only played piano on one song as well because i just um wanted people who were a lot better than me to play i wanted to be, to be the best they could be i didn't want it it wasn't a vanity project you know sure. i wanted it to be great um okay so then i yeah we went about finding some of the musicians i found through friends of mine and just people i admired and some of them the producers helped me find mm -hmm. and you know extraordinary string arrangers and brass arrangers and all this stuff and they all did everything remotely but it was important to me it was all organic so string arranger played all of the individual strings into a microphone uh same for the same for the brass so it's all completely organic instruments which is really important to me but then we had to sort of piece them together uh mm -hmm. but it sounds like they're in the same room for a lot of the, a lot of it which is pretty cool it sounds but... awesome yeah thank you thank you yeah yeah it was it was tricky especially on like the pirate song and stuff to make it sound i wanted it to sound like we recorded it like in a big barn but it was just it's difficult to do but they mm -hmm. john and jesse the producers did brilliantly with it um but hopefully the next music project I do can have a bit more, I can have a bit more of that experience, you know? Uh -huh. So did you, uh, how did you do like the vocals and, and the, was that done at your house? Just did them in a home. Uh, oh, just wow. did, I did them in my producer's home. Um, just, just, just sort of the two of us. Uh, and we just did them. We just had a system where we decided neither of us would see anyone for two weeks and then we would get COVID tests and then he, you know, he would have a mask and I would go there for two days and do all the songs and then that would be it. And uh, because uh, yeah, just, but that was the only feasible way, way to do it. it. Yeah. And then you did a video, right? Too for 1111. I did two videos actually. I did one two for 1111, one for rise up. Yeah. Um, which we did uh, more, you know, obviously much later. Um, okay. But yeah, then sort of just just sort of trying to tie together my two careers and getting friends from shows I've been in and yeah, and they have a, I'd worked they have with a big, and everything. Uh, big big uh, big names on your in your video for sure. Yeah, I was very very lucky to uh, to get Evan and and Flo to be in the videos and brilliant directors to to help me sort of craft them and uh really rewarding actually sort of coming up with I an idea for something in your head and then you know looking at the monitor on a, on a camera and, and seeing exactly what you had in your head seven weeks before actually being filmed mm -hmm. you know and then two weeks later you've got a full, a full video and it's just it's a very rewarding process because and for 20 you would have thought i'd be more numb to it after 20 years of being on film sets but when it's your idea mm -hmm. It's a completely different experience you know I, I sort of felt like i must have just lit up when i saw that was that your first chance really being the the mastermind behind a, a project because i mean you've been in a bunch of big movies and in film and everything else but it's like this is your own piece that you got to write and kind of see your own vision exactly through. no exactly a completely different sense of ownership and creativity you know i just i, I really felt like i made something uh, oh, mm -hmm. that's funny. In the in in the Shadow and Bone show, I say I say the line, "I made something," and so yeah, I, I just realized that. Um, <laughs> but I did. I made something, and um, and I think that's always something to be proud of. Whether it's a, you know, whether you choreograph the dance or you, you, you know, you made a recipe for a dinner or a, you know, whatever you it is. I think that that kind of part of us is an, is an important part to tap into mm -hmm. what was it nerve-wracking or like what was your how are you feeling when you put out your first like original piece of music for the first time so you are obviously have like a eyes looking at you and you've been doing these covers and and different things on your instagram and then now it's like i'm gonna put out like you're you're super vulnerable you have to put out this song of your own were you worried about the reaction you might get from it i actually thought I would be and I really wasn't oh, okay I uh 
I just sort of had a chat with myself and um, thought, you're 40 years old. You know, you know exactly who you are. You're very comfortable in your own skin. You, you're proud of what you've made. You like what you've made. And what the reaction is, is, is unbelievably secondary. But also, it's only for the people who are going to love it. Those, that's who it's for. Mm -hmm. So, and I think honestly, what really helped on that, I think on the day I released it, there was a little, there was a video that someone sent me on, someone sent from TikTok to me on, on Twitter or, so, or Instagram or something. And it was just this like young woman dancing in her kitchen to 11, 11 with this huge smile on her face. And it made me so extraordinarily happy. Uh, that this moment was happening because I wrote a song, and 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 those those kind of little moments continued to flood in, and and I couldn't care less how many people have, how many people are streaming it or or, or any of that stuff, and it, it, it's sort of obviously lovely to think that something is popular, but it's 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 the fact that each one of those streams represents someone who might have nodded their head or might have smiled or might have cried at something that in their own life it made them think about or any reaction is valid and wonderful but mm -hmm. you know each of those streams represents someone who had a reaction and that to me is, is quite thrilling that's amazing and uh, talk about a number of reactions i mean 11 11 on spotify has over one and a half million plays i mean people are loving the song it's amazing yeah that's awesome thanks yeah I, I i i don't know if that's if that's how that compares to other things again but it's not um you know it's it's, it's not the it sort of wasn't the point of it for me the point was sure. just put it out in the world yeah you know, i i've said this on other other interviews so forgive me um Twitter fans who have listened to every interview that I've done loyally, uh, <laughs> uh, forgive the repetition, but, but um, you know, when we put out music, it's called a release uh -huh. and it felt like I released it. And the other thing we do with music is we share. And, you know, I, it's difficult to think of other things. I mean, I think we recommend films and things to each other, but with music, the amount of times I sit around and go, oh, do you know, have you heard this song by this person? And they say, oh, no, great. Have you heard this person? Like, have you, have you heard this new tune? And it's kind of like we used to swap like top trumps or, or, or whatever the thing was when you were a kid, mm -hmm. po Pokemon or, or I'm trying to think of things my little brother did, Tamagotchis or I don't know, <laughs> sure. anything yeah. you swapped, you know, right, football right, stick, right. Foot, foot, your soccer right. stickers, like uh, any, anything that, people sh sort of shared, we do that with me, we share it. And it's, and it's, you know, then people, uh, you know, with the, with the luxury of, of, of the communication and connection of social media, people can share their reactions with me, which mm -hmm. is, you know, it's a give and take. I share the music, you share your reaction. And that, that to me is a lovely interaction. There's so much on social media, which just can be so poisonous and misleading, but that to me is very pure. Sure. Yeah, I'm sure you got a totally different sense of, uh, you know, accomplishment with with this record versus if a show you were on does well or a movie, it's probably a lot different feeling when knowing that like this body of work and this piece that you've well, it's, it's a all team, you, it's a team right? sport. It's a, it's a team sport. Yeah, I mean, music is as well, but but um, you know making films is very much, you know, there's a writer, there's a director, there's a studio, there's a, there's an editor, there's, you know, there's, there's, there's actors, there's crew, there's ops departments and gaffers and cameramen right. and, yeah, and, yeah. and ADs and all these, and everyone is responsible for whether that's good or not. Um, and yours is your part and you try and slice off a, some, a piece of reality. You slice off something honest and then trying to inject it, a piece of yourself into, into what you're making as an actor whereas this is just like all me and then you try and inject a little bit of structure around it to share it mm -hmm. but there's a little piece of my soul in this music you know sure sure is it, it sounds like you're going to continue writing music i mean you talked about how just taking pieces from interviews that you'd been in recently and writing jotting down little little lines and pieces yeah i mean i'll certainly keep writing songs i don't know what i'll do with them uh i'd love to do all sorts of things i'd love to do a covers album i'd love to 
I'd love to do some live shows somewhere. I'd love to do more musicals. I'd love to, you know, I'd love to uh, make a full length album. I'd love, I'd love to do everything. It's just, um, I also love being an actor and doing that. So right. <laughs> see what, what opportunities come about. I, uh, luckily, I, I feel like I'm, I don't have the pressure of somebody saying, come on. I don't have the pressure of a label saying, oh, where's the next album? You know, it's, mm-hmm. I, it's not that, that that pressure is not on me. So I can do it how I did the first one, which is when it when I feel it. That's amazing. And it, well, you did kind of answer it. Performing live. I know you're a performer in yourself, but was that something that you hope to do with this record? Is it is. It? It's not something I'm particularly confident with. I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to record at the moment uh, a few things with other little uh, 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 little recordings with with some musicians and bands and things in 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 LA, just covers and stuff, and um, just to kind of uh, sort of a privilege to be asked, but just to just to just to dip my toe in the water of singing with musicians is not really something I've done very much mm-hmm. of, so it's definitely a new thing for me to learn. But I, as I build my confidence with it, I'm sure I you know I'm sure I'll be selling out madison square gardens in no time <laughs> soon enough <laughs> well ben thank you so much maybe man, a for pub doing maybe a, a maybe a, maybe a maybe, maybe just a pub 200 maybe just a pub <laughs> 200 for, capper for, for 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 drunk regulars and a and a and a, and a sleepy dog <laughs> who might uh, perk up a bit at the who might perk up a bit at the at the at the up-tempo stuff but is definitely snoozing during the ballads yeah <laughs> well i i love the record and um i appreciate thank your time and thank you so much for doing this i do have one okay. more quick question for you i want to know if you have any advice for aspiring artists i would say it's something i've probably come to extremely latterly but um i think i think it's paramount to make something that you love um and don't worry about trying to capture any zeitgeist to appeal to a particular crowd, you know. I think I think if you make something you love, and I think that that goes for writing a script or a poem or creating a new recipe or whatever, what, uh, you know, wh- whatever it is that that your is your creative endeavor. But certainly with music, because you're the one who's going to have to play it and listen to it over and over again, and you know, talk about it and, and sort of stand up for it. So, um, yeah, and, and I think I think people recognize honesty. People recognize so authentic, something authentic mm-hmm. um, versus something that was made in an attempt to appeal to them. And I think I've learned that through through acting as much as I have through, through music. Um, but I think that that you know, you if you're authentic, then you recognize the passion and you recognize so many things that go along with with the authenticity. So um, you know, it's it's the same advice to happy life, I think. Just be be yourself and know that that's enough. Bring me the bad word.